this patient has a, a proven left-sided carcinoma breast for which modified radical mastectomy was done. First of all, understand one side carcinoma breast, the other side no primary but axillary, axillary node is present. It will be a metastatic disease, we call it M1. But if there was a primary on the other side, then we'll stage the two breasts separately. Is that clear? Yes. So, we are looking at a patient who has been operated on one side, received every therapy. That time it was not contralateral breast and axilla were normal. But post-therapy, now the patient is all cycles of chemo given, radiation received, and she's developed a node on the contralateral side. That's the story. Now we need to work extremely hard to rule out a primary on the other breast to stage it properly. So we'll call it a staging workup. That's number one. In the staging workup, if you don't find any primary in the contralateral breast, and suppose you're right in what you're saying, what Junaid was saying was, that is just a breast cyst in the contralateral primary. Now, even this breast cyst assumes a lot of importance in view of the node and the planning of the therapy. So, let's assume it is positive. Then the story is simple. We are talking about when we stage breast, it's a T1, N1, M0, whatever, CT and one n Of course, ultrasound will confirm the nodal status. This is the AJCC 8th edition recommendation now. There is no clinical staging by axilla, there is mm -hmm. ultrasound added, right? So suppose it is positive, then the problem is simple. Mm -hmm. We treat it as a new primary and we manage it entirely uh, on the same lines, except what? What should what should be missing in the treatment plan now? Radiotherapy. Very good. So you can't repeat radiation. Barring that, everything is more or less the same. When you were giving systemic therapy, it was also working on the other breast. So it's not a question of repeating chemo. Yes. So radiation you cannot give. Chemo you have already given. So mm -hmm. Surgery. So the answer in that case would be a modified radical mastectomy if she wants it. Or conservation depending upon whether patient has got radiation in the past or not. But patient has got radiation in the past. So breast conservation is out. Now mastectomy, whenever we offer mastectomy in today's scenario, today in our unit, that's where Kotsos thesis also, we must offer reconstruction alongside. Either we do it with implants or we do it with autologous, that is LD or TRIAM or whatever. So the standard of care is clear and we can take it that way. Now the whole discussion is about a situation or a scenario where there is no primary and it's a metastatic disease. Now, in a metastatic disease setting, what is the standard of care? Systemic therapy, because it's a systemic disease. And systemic therapy, you already given chemotherapy, so now what is remaining? She's already on hormonal treatment because the, what was the, bio, what was the status last time? Sir, ER positive, PR negative, HER2 negative. So, ER positive, PR negative, and HER2 negative, so more or less luminal A. Because PR doesn't influence therapy greatly. Yes. So it is a luminal A, which means good news cancer. No cancer is good news, but luminal A is relatively better. So hormone therapy is already continuing. She is postmenopausal, so aromatase inhibitors. So there is no confusion. That continues. Should we leave this axilla to respond? That's one. Or we do something extra. Now comes the question of, in a metastatic setting, the significance of doing surgery. That's the question you are asking. Now this is based on many trials. There is a Tata trial which says there is a disadvantage of doing surgery in a metastatic setting because the outcome was worse. But there is a Turkish trial where it was found that the outcome was better. The difference between many trials and the Tata trial is that 
in Tata trial, they did not divide the patients into oligometastasis and proper frank, macro, big metastasis. Others did it. So now the emerging evidence is oligometastasis, you may go for surgery, provided it is confined to one or two sites. So that, that's where the definition of oligometastasis comes in. Now coming to the concept of surgery in the metastatic setting, it is based on a logic. The logic is, in a metastatic setting, if you remove the primary, then the metastasis becomes the primary and starts throwing metastasis. So that is one hypothesis that this is the reason why they do worse. You have to understand. If I'm adding treatment, why should patient do badly? You have to understand, no? If I'm adding mastectomy, why should it uh, impact the survival? Why should it? It should improve whatever. Agar nahi bhi improve kare, to kuch nuksan to nahi hona chahi. It should not harm. But the data study says nuksan hai. Now that the reason they give us, not they, the other studies where it has been found, there, there, there was no reason given, is that this hypothesis is that the metastasis becomes or behaves like a primary. So you've done nothing, you remove one primary with another. And the flip side is, that is the, the, the hypothesis that it benefits is based on the logic that when you remove the primary, you're taking away all the cell lines. You're blocking one cell line, but the others are open. So when you remove the source, all the, you know, the stem cell concept. So if you remove the breast only, breast organ, organ is not there, the organ's cancer obviously won't be there. So it's taking care of the multiple places from where the metastasis could be happening. But that can happen, you know that. How do you know that it happens? Many a times you find that primary was ERPR positive, but metastasis is ERPR negative. Mm -hmm. Lymph node is ERPR negative. It has been tried, it has been studied. I am not talking about post chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. So how is it that the son of a tiger was a jackal? Mm -hmm. So the logic is, it is never a tiger alone. There are many jackals, many wolves, yeah. all of them living together. And we just looked at tiger, the others we didn't find. So we think tiger, next should be tiger, not tiger, there is something else, no. So breast cancer is a heterogeneous disease, like its distribution. One cancer has many cancers. Like I often say, one human being has many human beings inside. So we have 130 odd trillion cells. We start with a single cell. and about one seventh or one eighth of the flora of bacteria around you that makes you and each one of them has your genetic code so some of those bacteria are actually you so you cannot say it's just one human being that you're talking about each cell is independent capable of doing everything itself each cell has the same function that the rest of the body has from one cell you can recreate the whole body potentially I can, there is a concept on organogenesis now where they are trying to create, like skin has been cultured, keratinocyte culture as they call it, they can create skin. But the only thing they find missing is like a tiger grown up in a cage versus a tiger in the wild. So when you throw this tiger grown, that is grown in the, that has been brought up in a cage in the forest, it dies because everything, everybody else will kill him. Same thing, these keratinocytes don't survive because the other bacteria just eat them up. The normal skin has that capability to fight it out because it is wild in that sense. The same thing applies, so you can recreate anything. So each cell is an individual. So therefore to say that cancer is just one person talking to you, no, no, that's not true. It's so many demons put together. That's why you really look at the, around the Shera time I was analyzing when uh, Bengali celebrated big time. You see the Mother Kali is killing and there is a, you don't allow even a drop to fall because Mahishasur will become another Mahishasur from a drop. It's totally entirely the concept of cancer. That's why we need R0, I mean microscopic freedom from the disease. 
at the same time you don't want any spillage because each cell is capable of becoming one big demon again conceptually that's the logic and what is what is what is she been shown to be carrying all sorts of weapons radio chemo surgery immuno hormone hmm trishul sword everything and there is a tiger that uska kaam ek hi hai keeps on taking all the blood so that nothing drops because that rakt bead was supposed to become a complete demon each time the drop would fall same concept it is very scientific if you link it if you look at the the concept of cell lines it is one with many cells in it so that is the concept of the destroyer make sure that no such demon comes up again that is why they found it difficult to treat this cancer you know all the devtas they fail gods they fail then they sat down let's put all our energies together so you can cut it you can burn it you can poison it yes. surgery radiation chemo mm. or you can suppress it you know mm. or you can fool it tricking a cancer cell into dying apoptosis the editorial i wrote some years ago tricking a cancer cell into dying can you modify lifestyle in such a way that apoptosis is happening in normal cells cancer cells don't have apoptosis mm. that's a problem so we have apoptotic markers bcl2 backs bcl2 is anti apoptotic backs is pro apoptotic so we find their ratio that's called apoptotic index we find that apoptosis can be initiated if you can initiate it be initiated by love and fresh air good idea yoga meditation prayer faith strength of camaraderie they are all important don't be absolutely rigid and physics kind or newtonian in treatment the newtonian concept was everything is just a machine you just look at the concept of praying if you praying five times you five times surrendering committing so the levels of nobody must nobody has studied but they should study you find the endorphin levels would be rising yes sir they would be rising with each prayer right and when somebody is fasting for a long time he is constantly thinking why is he fasting so he is committing to something there are all methods of putting the positive positive energy together which stimulates apoptosis apoptosis is a very sensible smart way of letting a cell die rather than ruthlessly killing killing it apoptosis as a, is you know it's falling of dry leaves that is what apoptosis means so greek yeah so the greek word so the dry leaf when it falls it just floats and falls when you pluck it if you watch carefully the tree is also bleeding yes yes so apoptosis if induced naturally is the best chance of a cancer that's what lifestyle has got to do that's why prayer faith camaraderie charity helping others doing good things eating good food breathing fresh air all this comes in back to the case now my only option with the patient is above all do no harm primum non no share i don't want to do something which hurts so how does surgery hurt in these patients that's the logic no one i have given you the theory primary you removed another place another echelon becomes the primary the other is when you operate now there are studies to show that breast conservation surgery has a better survival than mastectomy you could argue against it earlier but today there is study there are studies to show that if you do less surgery the outcome is better so it's not the paradigm has shifted to the other side that no 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 it's not just equal is better why because more insult to the body another hypothesis more trauma leads to release of cytokines interleukins everything which in promote metastasis so less insult less spread so it's no longer you know more the better so so today's concept is this less more yes so less is the way forward but that is coming the understanding 
and it is less when you can do more. If you can do less, then you don't have a choice anyway. So I'm not suggesting that you don't learn anything. Mm-hmm. It's only after learning that you can do the whole thing that you should do the little thing. Mm-hmm. So the approach is not terminal speciality. I learn only little. Mm-hmm. If you don't know the whole thing, learning little makes you little. So the true definition of power or strength is that you have it but you don't use it. Mm-hmm. It's not not having. The true sense of being able to give is you have it, then you give it. When you are a beggar, you can easily say, I am like Mahatma Gandhi, I am wearing nothing. You, you don't have anything. So when you are giving something, first you should have it. So therefore, before you pass it on to others, acquire first. People say, no, I want to give everything that I do. I want to serve people. They say, we don't want your service because you don't know your job. <laughs> your service is terrible. You need to be good at what you are doing. Back to the case, if you put the patient on, chemotherapy is going to hurt, mm-hmm. homotherapy is going to hurt, we can observe that's one option. After we have done the metastatic workup, if there is no distant metastasis, if the disease is confined to Excellent. breast and axilla, I will give you my answer. My answer is mastectomy. Right. And I have given you the reason how I think about it. And then I can have an evidence for it. Many times, it's an old Mark Twain quote, no? There are four types of lies. White lies, black lies, bloody lies and statistics. And a lot of people suggest get all the data. Be very, very well equipped with your data. Because data is God. Get all the data. Then you can twist it as, as you want. This is statistics. You go there and you get any kind of a result. But honestly, the best way to approach it is with a conscience. Conscience should be clear. If you really mean good, again your endorphins and your energy will pass. I want to do good. How do I do it is what I am looking. You will find answers coming automatically. These are not miracles if you look at them carefully. These were, these were things that were bound to happen. Since you're doing, you're into oncology, you must understand this concept. Do not fall trap to the, fall prey to, sorry, to these huge number of trials. Yesterday we were asking about one chemo versus the other. Do you know one chemo may have an advantage of 15 days increased survival, but the toxicity could be worse. No patients can be given chemotherapy even when they're going to the, uh, you know, graveyard. That's not correct. No treatment should make her life worse. So I am offering her something which probably is the only weapon left. Provided she is not already metastatic means distant metastatic. Is it, you know what I there, there is an entity called as unknown primary. You may be missing everything in the breast. We have done MRI also which is the best investigation. Can we do a PET scan? Yes, but it will give you false positives now. It's not the best time to be doing it. So maybe the breast would show a very tiny primary. It has happened in the three cases that we presented in the conference and clinical meeting here. We had three cases with axillary node, but no primary. With the exhaustive investigation, nothing could be found. But after surgery, we found that primary was there to very tiny. So this is one option then. And we'll exercise that option. Any questions with that? Sir, there is a mammography which showed the lesion of 1 into 1 centimeter. Virat. Virat too. So, so, can we go for ultrasound guided for middle biopsy? No, we that? will obviously go for that. That's a part of the workup. Yeah. Although the mammogram, see the answer. Close your eyes and answer every breast case. Answer is triple assessment. So, it's not just clinical examination. It's not just imaging. It has to be four biopsy at the end. I'm, to, I'm including that. So triple assessment and a metastatic workup both done. Mm. Suppose tri- we have not yet finished with it. So if there is triple assessment done, mm. core biopsy shows it to be a primary. I will be, I you shouldn't use the word happier, but I'll be relieved that I have an answer. Yes. Any other question? Yes, sir. Professor Vekhotso, any question? 
what is the gold standard in terms of biopsy? Transdermal biopsy. Core needle biopsy with IH. Tissue, sir, tissue with IH. Right. So the gold standard is core needle biopsy. See, we often say this, and I'm I'm not tired of saying it again and again, but the answer is wrong. The gold standard is excisional biopsy. You cannot do it all the time. Mm -hmm. So, core needle biopsy is gold standard in terms of what you do, mm -hmm. but it's not. It has the same limitation. So, what have they done? They made it image guided core needle biopsy. We are there. कुछ तो बेटर हो एंड गोल्ड गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड डजन मीन इट्स द बेस्ट थिंग अवेलेबल इज गोल्ड द बेस्ट मेटल अवेलेबल प्लेटिनम इज मोर एक्सपेंसिव यू पीपल वुड नो बेटर बिकॉज आई हैव नाइदर ऑफ द टू सो इफ प्लेटिनम इज मोर एक्सपेंसिव मोर सॉट आफ्टर हाउ इज गोल्ड द गोल्ड गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड इज यूज बिकॉज वेन वी आर कंपेयरिंग द इकोनॉमी ऑफ नेशंस यू लुक एट द गोल्ड रिजर्व How do you compare? You know, like if you go to tribal areas, they don't have any currency, so they compare in terms of how many coconuts you have. So coconut is the gold standard. Coconut is the gold standard. No, it is not. I'm just giving an example. Sometimes the land is the gold standard, say in agricultural situation. I'm giving an example. Coconut. The problem is you never know. The trees would have many, so you'll have, you know. The your what do you call that in the in the uh, what is that the uh, last street has that index what do you call that index census so the census will go every half an hour so that is that is not good enough something more steady so the term gold standard means against which you compare gold standard doesn't mean this is the best possible way. like the gold standard is you must put on a particular scrubs particular dress particular thing but that's not the best they may be better but then to say better you need something so core needle biopsy is a gold standard when it comes to doing it but the final against which you compare is excisional biopsy or histopathology as you were saying so even if my core biopsy is she's right treatment won't change because Core biopsy says equivocal, mm. where the pathologist says I don't know. Now, does the treatment stop? So that's where the pathologist stops. The radiologist says correlated clinically. That's where he stops. But your job is still on. You can't tell the patient. The pathologist says it can't be done. The pathologist is God. The radiologist is God. So what do I do? The answer is no. The treatment will still be given. You will remove the breast, and that is where you find the primary, because you're providing the pathologist with a lot of tissue. So then the approach is the same that we are discussing. So we'll have the surgery and get a final report. The adenometastatic adenocarcinoma, they write. What more you could have done to be more specific to the breast? We should do immunohistochemical markers, especially ER, PR, HER to new. What can it resemble closely? So get that. So it could be metastasis from the ovary or from the GI tract. But GI tract won't have ER, PR. Yeah. You can compare with that. So it's a metastasis of unknown primary. Yes. Let's take it this way. Although she has the background mm. of carcinoma breast, mm. so we are biased towards it. It may be something else, you know, yeah, never know. Yeah. And then radiation is known to produce bank cancers. Mm. Radiation itself produces cancers. Yeah. Yeah. So never limit your thinking to uh, that of a horse with, you know, those blind. those goggles, not blinds. I think he looks <laughs> gorgeous with those. Goggles there, but they're blinds. You're right. They narrow your thinking. So you have a scotomatous approach. You're just looking narrowly, and it's possible that uh, you're missing points. So think widely. Apply locally. Don't get confused in thinking. 
the treatment is not changing because end of the day I still need tissue. Immunostochemistry is important, but remember breast is a modified sweat gland. So sweat gland cancers can resemble eccrine and epocrine cancers. Yes, correct. What are those? Eccrine and epocrine, so they are sweat gland carcinomas, so very rare sir, parts. They are usually associated with syndromes like birth or pubes syndrome. They are associated with multiple appendageal tumors and sebaceous, uh, sebaceous gland carcinomas. Absolutely. And check my publication on metastatic sweat gland carcinoma, which has got maximum hits in BMC, World Journal of Surgical Oncology. I published in 2004 or 5. So that was a carcinoma, which was, I mean, there was a lesion here in the medial side of the arm with nodes and everything was being done but everybody missed that small little tiny lesion here and it was presented like you people are standing here. I still remember Rishabh was the PG. Rishabh is in UK now. Very bright poster, very very intelligent. So the, the excision, everything done because I did the extended dissection without any primary male patient. So naturally, breast was easy to find if there was a primary. And core biopsy was suggestive. The core biopsy concept had just started. It was suggestive of uh, breast related malignancy or something. We did it in the entire ministry history. It came out to be a crying. The sweat gland had no customer. When you say sweat gland, breast is also sweat gland. So mm -hmm. just that got just that it's got modified. So these are so many places. Bronchogenic carcinoma can produce that you So from lung it can come, from head and neck it can come. From, I mean in a lady it can come from over your right, <coughs> which may resemble breast to a great degree. So you got to, to keep everything mind should be open. Don't close it. But treatment time be focused as a surgeon should be. Otherwise, you'll be a physician writing too many different shows. Eventually, you need to make a diagnosis and treat. End of the day, if you've treated your patient, you will find something. And many a times, you may not you may not be always right. So, if you say a success rate is 80 percent, it is only possible if you do 100 attempts. Then only you succeed in 80. If you do only one attempt, how are you going to succeed? So. We have to go by excluding other options and then we'll take a response. So remember, that's not a gold standard. We keep saying corneal biopsy is a gold standard in diagnosing. But you titrate it against the excision biopsy or the final histology. You need to do that.